All right. So it's telling me that I am live on Facebook. And guys, I want to welcome you to our Sisters How Y'all Feel. Now, this is one of the things that I wanted to put together, not because it's uh, Black History Month or anything like that, only because this is a conversation that we need to have uh, amongst women and specifically Black women. With everything that's going on right now, I wanted to put this conversation together and have it all month long because I think it's time for us to not only talk about the issues that's going on, but issues that are going on as it pertains to Black women. So I have my wonderful, wonderful host that's going to be with me, Miss Naja Smalls. Hey, y'all. To um, help me uh, open up this conversation. And what we're going to do tonight, once we go ahead and introduce our guests, if Naja, if you could introduce our guests, I want to be able to go ahead and put the link out there for anyone who wants to uh, jump on our Zoom right quick just to ask our guests some questions or me and Najima some questions as we talk about trauma tonight. So I'll let Najima introduce herself and then she's going to introduce our guests and we're going to get this conversation started. Yes, yes. Thank you, Gloria. I'm so delighted to partner with you on that, on this. You know, I am truly a fan of yours and the I'm Loving Me Project. I am Najma Smalls. I am the author of The Black Girl's Guide to Healing Emotional Wounds. And also I am the, um, I guess, what do, you, what do you want to call it? The artistic and content director behind the new site that just launched today, the Black Girl's Guide to Healing Emotional, uh, Healing Emotional Wounds website. Um, but our guest is phenomenal. She is an author. She is a holistic life coach. I met her over a year ago at a conference and we just gelled and have been not only friends, but sisters in this journey of helping Black women to heal. She is Aisha Tatum. What? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Listen, I am excited to have this conversation tonight. I want to first acknowledge God and thank him for this amazing opportunity, uh, for this time to be in this space. And I know this is a much needed series and a much needed conversation. I'm also very honored. Uh, thank you, Gloria, for the opportunity. I love your, your legacy that you're leaving, everything that you're doing to help uh, women learn to love themselves and all the work that you're doing to pioneer this movement. And also to the Queen Naja. <laughs> ah, yes. Such an honor, such an honor um, to, uh, to share uh, this time with you as well, because you know you are doing your thing, helping women heal. So I'm excited to be here. So good evening, ladies. Oh, thank you so much. Thank and to, you. you know, to kick this off, um, I just wanted to let the ladies know, if, again, if you have any questions, you can come on our Zoom right quick, ask your questions. You don't have to show your face. Um, but I wanted to open this conversation because tonight we are talking about trauma and the effects of trauma as it, ha as it relates to uh, Black women. And one of the things that I wanted to open a conversation with is this whole notion of us saying that um, our trauma that we have is considered to be normal. We walk around all the time saying that we have to be this strong Black woman. We have to be, you know, the, the one that takes care of the family. We have to be all these things. And then at the same time, we're basically suffering in silence. We don't know what it means to go out and achieve our goals and do different things without it being a struggle because that's all that we have been taught. Can you speak about the whole stigma around Black women in, in trauma for us? Well, I mean, I feel like Black women um, are in a position where we do have that stigma. You know, first of all, most of us are not raised in two parent households. Oftentimes we're dealing with seeing our mother um, be the strong woman, be the one that's out here taking care of the kids, trying to work her job. If she's able to pursue her dreams, even if she has the energy to do that. And I think for us, because we are taught oftentimes as young ladies, 
that's kind of what we see, we may think it's normal because that's kind of what is happening in the black community on a holistic scale. But when we're dealing with this idea of it being normal, we have to understand that it's, it's really not. It's not normal to feel all of the pressures of being a mother, being a wife, being, you know, wanting to live your dreams, uh, having a relationship, and then having to feel like you have to do it all by yourself. And I think that that kind of makes us feel like we're in survival mode. And when we're in this, in this energy of survival mode, that tends to not only create more trauma within us, but it also continues that cycle for our children. And it becomes, again, in our minds, normal, but ultimately it's not. We think it's normal because it's what we see, what we've been indoctrinated to, but ultimately it's, it's not healthy. And I think because we have these ideas of normalcy, we're really missing the whole point around what it really looks like to be you know, holistic, what it really looks like to be feminine and in your power, but also not have to feel like you have to operate in survival mode all the time. I love that you said it's not normal. You hear that, ladies? It's not normal. I love that. Yeah, definitely not normal at all. Can't hear you, Gloria. And the other thing is, is that, you know, looking at our past and looking at you know, some of the things that we went through, we look at the, the trauma that we face as children, either sexual trauma, uh, the, the violence that we saw or anything like that. We really don't understand how that affects us as we get older, Aisha, and how it limits us and stops us from really, really, truly living our life. Right now, when we when we talk about our trauma and what we saw and, and what we did, the the biggest thing that we try to do as black women, when we see it, we want to be able at least the stigma is, you know, my mom did it right. My aunt did it. My grandmother did it. So this is the way that I knew it for for my whole life. So if it worked for me, you know, it can work for you, not knowing that they passing on this generational trauma. Can you speak to that? I can. So first, I think it's important to understand that trauma is actually transmitted in the DNA, right? So we are predisposed, obviously, to certain types of emotions, certain types of uh, chemicals, certain types of energy while we are in our mother's wombs. So oftentimes when we have these experiences as we become women, as we become adults, sometimes our behavior and sometimes the way that we tend to show up is already like a predisposed within our own DNA, within our own cells. And when we go through this trauma as kids and we witness the abuse or the molestation or our daddy's not there, or we, we have all of these other dysfunctional things happening, what we tend to do is we tend to create our own viewpoint of the world. We tend to deter determine what our self-worth is. We determine what a man, how a man's supposed to treat a woman, how a woman's supposed to treat a man. We even deform our money beliefs. We form our, our confidence, our habits. And as a result of these preconceived ideas based upon these traumatic experiences, we then subconsciously limit our own abilities to get out of our own way to go forward into really ultimately the life that God wants us to have. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when we have these predispositions, when we're in childhood and you know we see our mom and dad fighting or maybe our, our father's not there or we're dealing with um, you know, the molestation or we're dealing with um, the mom that's in survival mode or we're dealing with the financial poverty issues or we're dealing with not getting the love and affection we needed from our mother or from our father. We're dealing with the abandonment, the rejection all of these other things that we're dealing with, all of those really become, can become a part of our own personality, our own makeup. And as a result, subconsciously, we tend to take on that identity. And as we take that identity on, we limit ourselves. We, we're no longer operating um, in a space of, like I like to call it, 
our spiritual identity, right? Like we begin to operate more in our flesh identity and more in our limited identity. And then we have all these other issues that we continue to pass on to our children. And it really does become a generational curse. And so what we ultimately want to begin to do is take a look at how these traumas have shaped our identity, how these traumas have influenced our habits, how these traumas have influenced our self-worth, how these traumas have influenced our relationship, not only with ourselves, but with the men or, or the relationships that we attract, how these traumas are limiting us in our ability to go after our dreams and, and really begin to manifest the life that God wants us to have. We really have to take a look at those things and begin to do the work on a subconscious level to really begin to reprogram our mental and then begin to do the healing work at the level of ourselves and in the level of our body and the level of our habits and all of the other areas that that comes along with it but you know that the, the thing is Aisha they don't it's like a lot of people don't know that they're doing it because it's so normal right I know that there are some things that stop me I don't know if it comes from trauma or not right I, I would tell the story all the time about how I didn't know that I had trauma until I got married and I couldn't call my mother-in-law and father-in-law, mom and dad. I couldn't do it. Mm. I couldn't say it. I, I would say that's not my mother. That's not my father. Where I wouldn't even say those words. I would literally just walk in a room and start talking. Mm -hmm. And for all those years I was married, for nine years, I never said those words. Mm. Wow. And I did not know, I, and I did not understand why it was so hard because the only thing that I had in my head, right, was that, you know, that's not my mother, that's not my father. My mom died, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And then it was just like, well, what do you, well, what do you call? what do you call us? <laughs> right. Right. And she's like, well, what do you call us? And, and I'm up there like, I, I said nothing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that I'm upset that my mom died when I was young, seven years mm -hmm. old, and she died mm -hmm. of AIDS and I was ashamed mm -hmm. and I could not give, I could not give that to someone else, not the pain, but I didn't think any other person I could call mom deserved that space, mm -hmm. right? First of all, I made that whole story up in my head, right? Mm -hmm. Because of what I felt was mine and my own pain, right? Mm -hmm. So when we walking around trying to heal, it's like the funniest thing, I can go, I can, if I meet your mom and you say, Gloria, this is my mom, I could say mom all day. Mm. Right. But if it was a, a, a person that I was dating and I meet their person and they got close, mm -mm. Mm. You, you get what I'm saying? So we don't mm -hmm. know sometimes I, in my head, it was because you're not that. Mm -hmm. Not addressing what the real issue is and I think that is the big issue where we want to do better but we don't even realize the stuff that we got going on mm -hmm. to go ahead and try to do better mm -hmm. yeah I think oftentimes as it relates to trauma I think sometimes we we know like what some of our traumas are right like some mm -hmm. of those things we can identify yeah. but oftentimes it takes experiences and circumstances to reveal those unhealed wounds that we have going on. Like you literally have to be in an experience and be triggered or notice and become aware and say, wait a second, I may have some healing work to do around this, right? Yeah. Like I may need to like really take a look at this because all these years have passed. I didn't really know I was carrying this trauma until this situation happened. And I think that's why it's so important as women as we focus on our healing, we really need to be very, become very self-aware, conscientious, and be intentional about how we're paying attention to the circumstances that tend to unfold in our life. The experiences, the people that show up, the things that trigger us, our reactions or our responses, and that whole nine. Right. And mm -hmm. Najima, is there anything you want to say? Yeah, I was going to add to that um, when you were sharing your story, Gloria. Um, 
you know, one of the, the key ways that I believe our trauma shows up is when we're in relationship with people, right? It's when we get close. And that's what I heard. Exactly. You know, you saying there, you got close to your, your significant other, your husbands, your boyfriends and so on. That's when that part of you, and, and, mm-hmm. and see the thing about it is, I think, you know, and Aisha, you could probably speak more to this, is when we have trauma, our going in that survival mode, Aisha, mm-hmm. that you talked about, when we mm-hmm. have we're in survival mode, right? And we're trying to protect, you mm-hmm. know, we think that we are trying to protect. Because I counsel a lot of women in uh, D.C., right? Mm-hmm. And um, many of these women are from social, socially disadvantaged backgrounds. A lot of them are, you know, a product, uh, children of the drug um, epidemic that happened in the 80s and 90s and so on. And, you know, sometimes they will put me in the place of mom, right? Mm-hmm. And the minute I don't yeah. return a phone call, yeah. the minute I don't return a text, they're angry. Yeah. Mm. They are they are deeply hurt. And I'm like, you know, mm. what's going, you know, it took me a minute, like, what's going on here? You know, right. and they're reliving that same hurt. It's like you are disappointing me again, the mm-hmm. same way that my mom disappointed me. And so sometimes we put up those guards and those protections too, right? Mm-hmm. So that and we say, I'm not going to let anyone hurt me. I'm going to protect this but sometimes we're just really just shielding the trauma yeah and not allowing the the wound to hurt yeah Mm -hmm. heal I should say oh god you guys I I, I'm so glad that we're talking about this because I can remember I I saw my sister get beat up by her boyfriend Mm. and when I got when when I got married as I you of course you say that's never going to happen to me right Mm -hmm. and uh, me and uh, my husband was having an argument and he was like, stop acting like a bitch. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. Those words set me off. Mm-hmm. Where he got scared because I, <laughs> I was always reserved. Right. Mm-hmm. I was always a reserved person. But for some reason, what I heard was that some, this is going to escalate to something where I think he is going to get physical with me, Mm-mm. right? Mm. So I immediately had to shut it down. And I just got crazy to the point where he was like, what is wrong with you? Mm. And, and I said, because you're not going to talk to me like that, because next thing you know, you won't be doing this. And the next thing you know, and I'm just laying it all out of all mm-hmm. the things that I remember. Mm-hmm. Trigger. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. it happens to us all the time. And we're trying to figure out, well, why the hell do I act this way? Yep. Yeah. Why yeah. am I afraid of something happening to me that happened to my sister, my mama, or mm-hmm. me these years ago, and I can't get out of it? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we have these, these experiences that trigger us because that stuff is stored in our cells. Anytime we have an experience, first of all, anytime we think a thought or have a feeling, that information is going into our cell, is going into our DNA, is encoding us. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes when we have these reactions, it's really not, it's a habitual reaction because it's, it's your cells reacting to memories that have already happened and so you behave out of those habits at the cellular level, you know, and that's why I think oftentimes when we think about healing, it's so important to just go beyond, you know, the idea of getting some sage out. Let me go get the sage. <laughs> Let me get the yeah. sage. The sage, the sage. <laughs> Let me get my no laugh. I'm laughing because I got some and I sure do. I'm like, ain't nobody coming in here. Let me say <laughs> Listen, we get the sage out. We get the crystal. Let me try to get this crystal. Yes. See if I can get my heart chakra right. Girl, you know, we look, want all these things. Oh, <laughs> <is> ready. <laughs> but you know, everything. oftentimes, <laughs> yeah. And I and I and I let women know, like those are all great things, but that's not gonna clean out cleans out your cells. That's not gonna change your habits. Mm-hmm. That's not 
going to change your perspective. That's not going to change your self-concept. That's not going to change how you show up for you. These are all things to try to, you know, kind of assist us in the journey. But the real work is within. It's like you really got to get deep down in there and start really taking a look. And as you begin to heal, other things are going to come to the surface. As you begin to heal more, and other things are going to come to the surface. And so I think that that's, that's a part of the issue as well. Like, you know, sometimes we think we're doing the work. We, we really think we're doing it. We're trying to do it. But then it's like, dang, why ain't nothing changing? Like, I'm still being triggered. Like, people, I still want to get my boxing gloves out and go punch the person across the street because they piss me off. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So, so. We want the quick fix sometimes when it's, yeah. like, it's a journey. It's a lifelong journey. I, I'm quick to tell people I'm still healing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a journey. I'm still healing because there's layers and layers and programs and programs and all kind of stuff that we are still releasing, even from our mothers, even from our grandmothers, you know, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so how do we start the process and, mm -hmm. and, and how do we how how do we become aware first do we have to be triggered does something have to happen to us so we can see that something is wrong and how do we go ahead and you know start that process so that we can get on this journey because everybody wants to live a, a good life right right and release but how do we get started yeah i think that the first the first step is always setting an intention like really setting an intention, asking God to really help you on this journey, like making an intention to say, you know what, I'm going to heal. I'm going to start this process. And I really am a firm believer when you set an intention and you're sincere in that, then you really are going to begin to open up the doors for that process. I think the next step is just being very aware and observant. You don't necessarily have to be triggered to start the process. All you have to do is just become aware. Let me look at my habits. How am I responding when uh, someone cuts me off on the road? Or how am I responding whenever, you know, I'm feeling a little stressed out? Like, am I going for food? And what types of food am I going for? Am I going for sugary food, salty foods? How am I responding when I see other people on social media who seem to be living the best life? Am I then internalizing that and basing my own self-worth on what I see on the outside of me. I think it really begins with you being uh, intentional and then setting your intention to be aware of how you showing up for yourself and how you showing up for your family and how you're showing up for God and how you're showing up in your purpose. And I think as you begin to do that, things will come to the surface for you to say, hey, like that's something I really need to take a look at. Where did this come from? And, and how long have I had this issue? And why am I responding this way? What is my belief, right? Our behaviors are based upon what we believe. So my, what is my belief underneath this behavior? And if we can get underneath these certain beliefs we have, we can then begin to change our behaviors and our habits and really get the healing process moving. And I know, I know we limited on time. So we do have one guest, Miss Khadijah. She's like my, she's like my favorite person in the world. Oh, uh, she, she's she's been with us for a, a very long time. So uh, Khadija, you could go and ask a question. Yes. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. I was listening to everything you said. Um, is it Aisha? It's Aisha. Aisha. And um, you're so right about the trauma, about, you know, holding on to things and um, reliving things that you see your parents go through. And mm -hmm. I know in my case, I, my my mother and father was in a they had like a physical relationship hmm. and then I got into a relationship like that and in return I lost a daughter to this person who hmm. they abused me and I think that I, I kind of I don't I don't want to say I blame myself so much but I feel like my my daughter, my daughter that, that's here, she she witnessed it. Mm -hmm. And she's 32 years old now, and I have custody of her children. And I kind of feel like um because she doesn't let go of it, mm -hmm. she forces me to live in that space. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard for me because. I, I, had, I have went to counseling, you know, I've mm -hmm. taken her to counseling. We've done family counseling together. And I just feel like 
I don't I don't know if she's just holding on to that as an I don't want to say an excuse, but like a crutch. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like she still blames me for it. And mm-hmm. because she blames me for it, she doesn't accept responsibility for the things that she does. Mm-hmm. And um so now she's like, um, she had a nervous breakdown. Mm. And so now she's like suffering from these psychotic episodes and things like that. And mm-hmm. I have her children. And it's so hard on me because I try not to dwell on what happened to my youngest daughter so much. Mm-hmm. But it's like, the more I try to c- come out of that space, the more my daughter kind of drags me in it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. you know, it's, and this is really hard for me because it, it sets me through these emotional, you know, roller coasters all the time. And mm-hmm. I try not to have this, be angry at her, but it's, it sets me into a deep depression. And then I have my grandchildren here, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I'm raising them and they're, and they're mm-hmm. young. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I had to give my whole life up, you know, to raise yeah. her children. And it's just, it's just a lot. I'm so sorry uh, to hear that about your your youngest daughter because I know that I've lost a mom but I I can't imagine losing a child so I know that that's a very deep pain um and I also know that your daughter that you currently have custody of her children it sounds to me like she wants you to pay like she's on a subconscious level she's still very angry with you and she is is um, wanting to punish you and wants you to pay for the mistakes and and all of the heartache and all of the pain that you caused her. And as a result, like her actions and her behaviors, although, you know, she, she's not really understanding how it's impacting her. She's trying to, it seems to me that she's trying to get back to you on a subconscious level with her behavior, you know? And so outside of the counseling and the, and the therapy, what are some other things that you that you guys have done and is she open to is she open to help outside of counseling and therapy she doesn't want any help okay Um, i've tried to get her to go help she doesn't she doesn't want any we had a physical confrontation mm. about a month ago Mm -hmm. and um it's like it's really hard you know because it puts me at a point where i have to distance myself from her you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and um and her children too, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's it's really hard. It's 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 hard. It's like a struggle day to day. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I probably, I've and I my it's been it'll be twenty nine years that my youngest daughter passed away. Mm-hmm. And so you know, I'm just I my thing is how long are you going to hold on to it? You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm without, you know, really trying to get some help for it? Or do mm-hmm. you really want help? Because like I said, I've taken her to counseling. She's had counseling by herself. We've had camp family counseling. Mm-hmm. Um, my son was only two. He doesn't remember um, his sister, but he mm-hmm. was, I took him to family counseling with us as well. And it's like, it's been so long. And it's like, how, how much longer do I feel like you're punishing me? You mm-hmm. know, how, how, you know, so. Do you... Do you feel like um, you've completely forgiven yourself? Sometimes I feel like I do. Um, I think that the more that I get, the more that my that I have this issue with my daughter, mm-hmm. that's where it's I start to go back to mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I, I that's that's be honest. It's like the more I go through things with her, the harder it is. For me not to feel, yeah, like this is all my fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that I've learned about um, healing and you know really taking a holistic approach is oftentimes the people in our life they mirror back to us what's within us that still isn't all the way healed. So because she's still bringing these things up, she's really mirroring to you that you still are really holding yourself in punishment behind what has happened. So one of the things that would be really beneficial for you is to really get really deep into forgiveness work. Um, And there are a lot of resources out there. And then also a powerful tool that I teach my clients 
there's a lot of different ways to start really working on releasing the trauma and, and really healing on an emotional level. But emotional freedom therapy is a really powerful process where you can begin to start actually physically releasing these emotions from your meridians within your body. And I think that that will be something that will be very beneficial for you. The other thing that I have found to be very helpful is doing um, creative visualization with, uh, with people that you have, um, people that you are in harmony with, but also people that you're not in harmony with. And so one really powerful exercise um, that has helped me out and, and I would like to share it with you and whoever else is listening, is I want you to take a minute, um, set an intention tonight, close your eyes, and I want you to imagine uh, your daughter that's still alive. I want you to imagine talking to her, but I want you to pour your heart out to her. I want you to apologize to her. I want you to tell her how much you love her, how much you care for her, how sorry you are for her, and that you're still here for her. I want you to really pour everything all the way out on the line. And I want you to continue to do this until you notice some things have changed. I also want you to do this process for your youngest daughter, the one that, that is no longer here. I want you to imagine her and go through this process of, of apologizing and telling her that you love her and really pouring out your heart to her. And the third person I want you to do this is with yourself. And when you do it with yourself, I don't want you to imagine yourself in, in, the, in the spiritual realm. I want you to get a mirror and I want you to begin to have this conversation with yourself and get out as much of it as you can. And you're probably going to have to do this several times, but you'll begin to notice some healing taking place. And I think that that will be very beneficial for you and your family. Okay. Thank you. And, and you're welcome. In, that, that was on point, Aisha. That's, that's some right. powerful stuff. Uh, Khadija, let me also say, sis, I, I, I am so, so sorry about mm -hmm. what happened to your baby. Yeah. Um, one, one thing I want to, um, encourage you to do as well. Um, my sister, um, went through an awful, awful divorce, um, where he just kind of, she came home and he was gone and left her with no answers or whatever, even to this day. And she held on a lot of anger inside of mm -hmm. her and what she did every single day that she woke up, she, she asked God to help her to mm -hmm. forgive mm -hmm. and the thing about it is some situations we need God in right some things mm -hmm. are just bigger than us they're yeah. just heavy they weigh us down they're just bigger than us and we need help and we mm -hmm. need to sometimes call on the person who created us who mm -hmm. knew before time that this situation was going to happen so mm -hmm. ask God every single day help you to forgive yourself mm -hmm. and help you to forgive your daughter. Remember, we can't change your daughter. You can't change her, okay? Mm -hmm. only, she, only she can change and God can change her. And you literally, I, my grandmother, when she used to get mad at us, she would say, I'm just putting you in the hands of the Lord. So mm -hmm. you have, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, grandma, okay. But yeah. sometimes, you know, we have to do that. Say, you know what? You know, you can say this to yourself. I'm giving her to oh, God. That's know? right. And, and, and put up some boundaries mm -hmm. between you and her because now that you're on this journey of healing, mm -hmm. you got to protect your peace, you know, because again, and we have to also respect everybody's on the journey at a different time and mm -hmm. she'll get there when her time, when it's her time, when she's really ready to receive it. But you, we, we are grateful that you're on this journey to heal. And so you've got to put up some boundaries, whether it's, you know, only talk to her because I know you have the kids, maybe only talk to her um, once a week or whatever, because uh, my sister-in-law, my husband's sister is going through a very similar situation where she had, um, uh, she's going through psychotic episodes and so on. And she was, it was just very, very toxic. Like mm. it was to the point where, you know, it was a family event and she would come over and you'd be afraid she was going to want to fight somebody, you know? Mm. And so we had to do the same. We love you, but you can't come over or, you know, we meet you here if we need X, Y, Z. And that's because we have to protect our peace. And then we have her daughter here 
that we are helping with. So we have to protect her too, because her seeing that behavior, her seeing us going back and forth with her mother, that was affecting her yes. as well. So we had to do what we had to do to protect the family until she decides that she's ready. And again, mm -hmm. remember, you can't change her. And, and, and sometimes I know we want to change more than, than they do. Mm -hmm. But when she gets there, she gets there. But keep saying that prayer to God every single day. God, help mm -hmm. me to forgive me. God, help me to forgive her. Yes. And, 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 and put her, as my grandmama used to say, in the hands of the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. See, Thank you. That's, why, that's why I'm smiling because... Uh, this is what I wanted to have these kind of conversations because there are so many people who are out here who, who just need the help, who just need the advice, you know, mm -hmm. and I know we have to wrap this up, but I would say to you, Khadijah, go ahead and when you start to forgive yourself, let go of that guilt as well. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, you guys don't know, but Khadijah, she started her podcast. She's talking about the political issues in her neighborhood. She is, you know, really uh, growing in her business and doing so many good things. And it's like what we talked about earlier, those barriers that come up is just like blocking the blessings mm -hmm. that should be coming down that just takes you right back down into the place where you were. And you're trying mm -hmm. to figure out how you break through, right? Mm -hmm. How do you break through that where you feel like you, you take two steps forward and then you go in three or four steps back, right? Mm -hmm. And what we talk about that setting boundaries and, and giving it to God and let them have their life. When we say those people are grown, you love them, mm -hmm. you will be there for them, but you have to protect your peace at all costs. Because it's like what you said uh, earlier, Aisha, you passing down that generational stuff. If her kids seeing you guys mm -hmm. fight and argue and do mm -hmm. all those things because they're going to want to know, well, what the hell did grandma do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yep. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? As to why she doesn't like her. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I really do appreciate that. And I appreciate everything ladies. So uh, I know you got to go. I know you got a, a, another interview coming up, but thank you so much. This was a great kickoff. Yes. Yes. Ladies, we're going to do this again yes. next Thank Wednesday, you. and it's just going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. I'm telling you. Uh, so please, thank you so much. Hey, please make sure you tune in. Make sure you share your social media, both of you ladies, all three of you ladies, so that uh, people would know. Okay. Najmi, you want to go first? Oh, I can go first. Okay. You can find me on IG, uh, Miss N Smalls in real life. I'm on Twitter, Najma S. Let me spell Najma for y'all. <laughs> Please. <laughs> N-I-J-I-A-M-A. Okay. N-I-J-I-A-M-A. Um, also check out the new website, The Black Girl's Guide to Healing Emotional Wounds dot mm. com. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you haven't got the book, go get it because it's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> you're welcome and i'm aisha you can find me on instagram and on tiktok at aisha tatum which is a-i-s-h-a-h-t-a-t-u-m and uh it's been an honor i'm so very grateful very grateful to god very grateful to uh you miss gloria and miss najma and all of you lovely ladies out there you miss khadija and i uh, wish you all a prosperous healthy loving an abundant and blessed year for you and all your loved ones yes absolutely yes, sis. <laughs> and, and Khadija, give everybody your podcast and, and um, my and, podcast is willpower unsurfaced um you can watch it on youtube um it's under glock aware radio that's a radio station that um out of philadelphia where i air it from so you can reach me there and also my instagram is Khadija sams <laughs> <laughs> all right ladies well that's a that's a wrap for this week i hope you guys uh check us out for next week uh with the wonderful guests that we have and we're gonna rock this thing out to the end of february so thank you ladies and thank, thank you, you for doing this love y'all all right bye. Bye. bye bye